Do I need to say anything else? folks <laughs> it is v max time baby before we get too far into this one i do need to note that uh this bike is for sale and as a result the owner uh my buddy norbert he uh isn't putting any money into it which means that uh, the front tire which is a little bit old is still an old front tire as a result it handles funny any of my handling problems that we encounter during this segment will likely be resolved by a fresh front tire. That's uh, just a quick little disclaimer. So with that being said, let's dive on in. So what's the first thing you notice when you get on a VMAX? Well, first of all, for me, it's how wide the stances between my knees. We'll talk about this more when I get to the specs, but holy moly, is this a wide motorcycle. And uh, it actually does kind of make it feel a little bit heavier than it might otherwise do. Beyond that, you actually have to be impressed by how rideable this bike makes an outrageous amount of power feel. Because I think, I think this bike is making about 200 horse, something like that. I forget how much torque, but this is an extremely, extremely powerful motor. 1700 cc's of V4 Fury. That kind of power is intimidating for anybody, especially when you combine it with this much weight. Uh, I don't know the specifics, we'll get more into that in a second, but this is a heavy bike. And yet, it feels really rideable, which is like a magic trick. <laughs> it's, it's nuts, it's nuts. There's no traction control, there's no uh, six axis IMU. This is a 2009 era motorcycle and it rides really, really well. It does like to fight me if I don't put any body English into it, but I think that's partially down to the unique shape of the front tire, which is uh, W-shaped. So I think if you have a normal front end on there, uh, it'll solve that issue pretty much right away. Now we do, we do have to talk about the power delivery. It's so smooth and so linear that you really don't feel worried hammering on the gas. <laughs> once those tires are warmed up, it doesn't really spin for me. I mean, obviously, if somebody was riding it more aggressively, I'm sure you'd get wheel spin like crazy. But the power delivery is shocking. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's so much fun. <laughs> Trying to describe what that was, was like the bike stopped moving and it started turning the earth underneath it. There are very few motorcycles that deliver that sort of torque. The only other one that comes to mind is the Suzuki Hayabusa. <laughs> boy, oh boy, is this a laugh riot. <laughs> but it's not fun to have this kind of power and no brakes. So how are the brakes on this bad boy? For having 12 pots up front on two different calipers, I was expecting it to feel a little bit funny, a lot like a Suzuki Hayabusa. Nope, this feels really good. You can just stab the front brakes and it will stop this thing almost instantly. 
it's a it's a very progressive feel surprisingly so again given this motorcycle's weight that's something they really needed to nail to make this bike feel right if the brakes sucked riding this bike would be terrifying absolutely terrifying because it's not it's not the motor that really makes this thing fast it's the brakes the confidence on the brakes that allow you to you know ride it at a, a quicker speed than you might otherwise do that's kind of counterintuitive you can have all the speed and power in the world but if you can't stop and slow down appropriately into a corner it doesn't mean anything on this bike it feels phenomenal wow that torque though holy cow <laughs> I was genuinely expecting this thing to feel scarier uh, going down the road. I honestly was. But it really doesn't. It feels good. It feels really good. Honestly, I would say better than it has any right to. And on that note, I'm going to find a spot to pull over and we're going to talk about the specs on this bad boy because boy oh boy are there some big numbers on this guy. Do you really need a primer on the specs on this thing? Doesn't everybody know at this point? I mean, it's a legend, right? Okay, regardless. 1,673 cc's, 200 horsepower, 123 foot-pounds of torque out of this bike with a claimed gas range of probably about 80 to 90. In reality, good luck, good luck. My buddy who rides this, he does, he, if we're going out on a group ride, we have to stop at every gas station because he just does not have range on this thing. They built the best motor they possibly could, and then they were like, oh, well, we need, we need to figure out a way to carry some fuel on this thing. And uh, they crammed it all under the seat, like the old VMAX, but uh, they just couldn't put much in there. So you get no range out of this thing. That's it's probably one of the biggest downfalls We'll get to more of those in a second. This thing weighs in at 683 pounds, which is relatively light when we talk about cruisers, but it still slows this down a little bit and it definitely helps make this bike feel more manageable. Now, let's go ahead and mount up on the VMAX here and talk about some of the ergonomics. Despite being a cruiser, the seating position is pretty darn sporty. The foot pegs are a little bit forward uh, they're not exactly what I'd call a mid, but when you put your foot back on it, it actually feels more like a naked bike with a stupidly wide gas tank than it does like a cruiser. That being said, if you put your foot forward, you kind of do your heel thing like a Harley rider, it's a relatively comfortable place to sit. However, at six foot four in my boots, six foot three, I do notice that the massive air scoops here are bullying my legs out from underneath it. I can't. I can't get a good purchase on here unless I kind of squish my legs back. Then there's like a nice little cut here for the shape of my knee. Otherwise, it's just, it, it's pushing my legs out about that far. The gas tank, the gas tank, the intake system is so wide on this bike that it can be a little uncomfortable. Yeah, cause you're short. What are you, you're like five foot six, five seven. <laughs> this is the actual owner and he's sitting on it at 5'7 and he actually fits on this thing. He wouldn't he wouldn't let me continue with the video unless he came and showed me how it's done. So but it just goes to show that when you get to my height, not a lot of bikes fit. So do keep that in mind when you're watching some of my reviews. But that does give me a good segue into the pros and cons on this bike. We already talked about the gas tank. It is stupidly small. You are putting 93 octane in here all the time. So you're going to be spending a lot of money on this bike. <laughs> Next thing, the rake angle on here does push this front tire very far forward. So the handling is slower than you would expect. And we have an 18 front and rear on this motorcycle, which means you're not exactly going to be able to put sporting rubber on here. I really wish that cruiser manufacturers when they're trying to make a sporty cruiser would just 
just put 17s on your bikes, guys. This could run R1 style rubber. You could put S22s on here, S23s, whatever you want, but it's 18s. That's stupid. And that's basically where the cons end. I mean, this bike is so freaking fast. It's so fun to ride and the brakes make it feel so confidence inspiring. You actually can use the power on this thing. A lot of times when I get on really fast motorcycles, they feel overwhelming. This is overwhelming for about five minutes and then you get used to it and it's just, it's second nature. It's so easy to ride this absolute beast of a bike that frankly, it's kind of scary. The last thing I wanna mention here, this could be a pro, could be a con, depending on the kind of bike you find when you get a VMAX is they don't make these anymore. So you are dealing with discontinued bike problems. I will say for my Gen 1 VMAX, I'm still finding OEM parts. However, not entirely sure what the aftermarket looks like for modern VMAXs. So bear that in mind. With that guys, let's get this out on the highway for about five miles before we have to stop at a gas station and see what it feels like out on the open road. Alrighty folks, pulling away on the highway on the VMAX here. This is probably one of the better places to have this particular motorcycle just because of the nature of the tires. But I would argue it's probably one of the Achilles heels of this bike. Given my predilection for hammering on the throttle needlessly and this bike's comically small gas tank. <laughs> when, when I just have, you know, a section to run, throttle <laughs> and then I get on the brakes and I wait a little bit and I let the cars start running away from me and then I hammer on the throttle again because that's what my brain does my brain just says bike go burr now my small monkey brain aside let's talk about the actual bike here very stable, extremely stable. We've got a long wheelbase. We've got a nice wide rear tire. We have a heavy curb weight that is just making this thing rock solid on the highway. I do wish that either the scoops were higher up or they were thinner like on my old VMAX because my knees are in the breeze right now. It's it, it, my, my legs are very wide. Now, admittedly, this isn't a particularly fast highway, but I've had this bike all the way through the RPM band. And one thing that's really surprising is how buttery smooth the riding experience is, whether it's the handlebars not having much vibration or the foot pegs having no vibration whatsoever. This is, this is a great, great cruiser. It's so comfortable and the lack of a windshield isn't really bothering me because of where it's dumping the wind. It's kind of hitting me in the middle of the chest and giving me that nice pocket of clean air around my helmet. If I was any shorter, I might want a slightly taller windscreen, something that can kick the wind up over my head, but this feels really nice. Now, I'm not even going to bother acknowledging passing power on this motorcycle. If you do not believe that a VMAX with 123 foot-pounds of torque and 200 horsepower does not have enough passing power. <laughs> that was just like nothing. I, I didn't really open the throttle there. I just, I just was like, oh, I want to... I want to accelerate a little bit. Whee! <laughs> the only problem is when you do that, you, you know, the VMAX's philosophy is f the sky. So you breathe on the throttle, you go through about a gallon worth of gas, and then you have to pull over at the next gas station. So bear that in mind. The only other thing I can knock the VMAX for is not having cruise control, but this is a 2008 bike, 2009. So this is way before the era of cruise on motorcycles. Just get a throttle lock. That idea seems like a really bad one. Putting a throttle lock on a VMAX seems like a, seems like a great way to get yourself into trouble. Let's just say that. And there goes my buddy Norbert, who actually owns the motorcycle and is probably annoyed that I'm not riding it as fast as he does. <laughs> oh, 
Oh man, before I get a ticket, I'm gonna get off the highway and start answering some Discord questions uh, and, and hopefully disappear because I, I do not need to get pulled over today. I say right before getting on the throttle. <laughs> All right, diving on into the Discord Q&A. If you would like to participate in future reviews, all you gotta do, click the link down in the description below. Check out the Patreon, which is the best way to support the channel. You can get access to videos early, you get some live streams occasionally, you get discounts on merch, all kinds of awesome goodies just down in the link below. Let's dive on in with our first question from Shawnee Peak. Does the VMAX require an oil baron on call to keep it filled? Well, assuming you're talking about gasoline consumption, you probably want to have a, a benefactor, yes. Um, you're putting 93 octane in this. Uh, if you don't live in Texas where gas is relatively cheap, you're probably spending more than on a pickup every year. <laughs> okay, yes, you're getting 30-ish miles to the gallon, probably if you're being easy, but that is pretty damn low when you consider other motorcycles. So you probably want a line of credit. I'll just say that. Expecto Delito, how does it compare to the modern interpretations of the Power Cruiser concept like the Ducati Diavel, the Triumph Rocket 3, in terms of performance, riding experience, and day-to-day -day livability? So the Diavel handles better, the Rocket 3 has more torque, but this is the happy medium between the two. If I was going to get myself a Power Cruiser, I lean more to the sporting angle. I would probably be tossing up VMAX versus Diavel. I don't really love the Rocket 3, honestly. I've ridden it a handful of times and it's fun, but it's not my bag. So I would say it's between the Diavel and the VMAX. I think the new Diavel's not that great. I would just, I would see for the price, if you can get one of these. Full Metal Corgi, will the VMAX finally allow me to grow chest hair and be the man I always wanted to be? Yeah, this will put some hair on your chest for sure. This is definitely not a motorcycle for somebody who is, I don't know, looking at their first big power bike. You need to know what you're doing to ride this. And uh, I felt my beard get thicker as I was railing on the throttle coming through some of these straights here. Yeah, this is a manful motorcycle. Along those same veins, don't know how to read this person's name because it's in Cyrillic, does one of these count as a real bike like a big twin Harley Davidson? Big twin Harley Davidson riders wish that their bike was as real as this thing is. This, this would make them cry, <laughs> honestly. Um, yeah, okay, they're like, oh, it's, it's really comfortable and it's great for cruising, so is this. And, uh, Aside from the gas mileage thing, I would have this every single day over any Harley Davidson, period, full stop, end of story. Uh, Harley Davidson guys are just, they're, they're selling themselves copium if they're trying to compare to the VMAX. Summit Coyote, are there any unexpected or standout features slash quirks on this motorcycle that people may not think of and how do they affect the riding experience. On this motorcycle, a standout feature is the radar detector that's wired directly into the shift light. I'll let you figure out why that's there. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge, running from the cops. Dasco asking a question I forgot to mention earlier. This only has five speeds in the transmission. So does this bike feel like it needs a sixth gear? <laughs> no, <laughs> it's so fast. And it's so smooth throughout the RPM band that you really don't need one. And maybe, maybe you're gear limited on speed at like 150 miles an hour, but you don't need a six gear. Um, it's totally fine. Uh, I certainly would never have noticed had I not looked at the spec sheet. I don't count gears in my brain and the readout on the dashboard here, I don't see it. I just look at the big speedometer up here, which is, much cooler, big giant sweeping needle. And uh, the little guy here, sure, it's neat, but you only need to know how fast you're going. That's it. Dad Bike Simp asking, given the price, the fact that it's only a five speed, is it really surprising that it went the way of the Dodo? It is not because they weren't selling these motorcycles. It's not because the bike had some flaw and it was the fit speed being the max of the transmission or whatever. It's emissions, let's be real. There, you can't make a bike that's this thirsty match emissions. So this one is definitely a, a casualty of the EU. But I do think if they were able to make a modern incarnation of this to answer the second part of the question, yes, I do think it would sell. Uh, this is a very 
iconic motorcycle. And regardless of whether you get a Gen 1, a later iteration of the carbureted one from like the early 2000s, or you get this guy, you're on a legendary motorcycle. And on that note, let's hit the road and let's wrap this thing up. So if it isn't painfully clear already, the VMAX is basically like a 10 out of 10 motorcycle for me. Um, I can't think of another motorcycle off the top of my head where it's so clearly just about having fun. And I think that's the thing that we're missing so much in modern motorcycling. This is a stupid bike. It's stupid. It's pants on head R-worded. Um, it's, this thing is dumb, but that's the joy of it. That's what makes motorcycling fun, is having something so boneheaded, but executed so well. And my real just like wish for the motorcycling industry would be to have more bikes like the VMAX. That's what makes it so legendary, you know? Um, it's an icon. You say VMAX to any motorcyclist anywhere and they'll immediately picture the most badass cruiser ever made. Is the VMAX a perfect motorcycle? God, no. <laughs> God, no. It's absolutely not, but that doesn't matter. Nobody who's buying a VMAX cares about the gas range. Nobody who's buying a VMAX really cares that the, you know, big scoops are pushing my knees out f away from me. It's not the most comfortable motorcycle in the world, but who cares? You're not gonna be riding it long enough for it to really bother you because the gas tank's so small. So you'll, you'll have fun for like an hour and need to stop and stretch out, gas up. I mean, that's, that's just, that's the fun of it. My buddy Norbert is selling this motorcycle and whoever owns it better take good care of this damn bike. If you're watching this video now, dude, uh, if you take poor care of this motorcycle, I will find you. I don't have money, but what I do have is a very special set of skills that make me very dangerous to someone like you. Or whatever the line is from Taken. Oh man, is it just fun? It's fun. And there aren't enough motorcycles that are just so self-indulgent now. <laughs> This motorcycle does not give a f It just doesn't care. And that just, that makes it so enjoyable. Everybody needs to ride a VMAX. At least once in your riding career, you have to ride a VMAX just to understand what it's about and why it's a legend. On that note, guys, I'm going to wrap this video up. Let me know your thoughts on the VMAX. Would you like to see a Gen 3 version of this bike, an official Gen 3? I kind of break down the carbureted ones into a first and second because there are some differences there. But that's besides the point. Uh, do you want the VMAX to return? Do you think it should come back? And if it did, would you buy it? Or do you just want it back because it's, it's the icon? On that note, guys... I'll catch you in the next one. See you later.